Hey there everyone, I'm meteorologist Addison Green here at KHOU based in the Houston metro area with your latest Atlantic Tropical Update. And of course, as we continue to go through the month of September, we continue to see storms develop left and right. And we are tracking two storms, Peter and Rose out there in the open waters of the Atlantic Ocean, but also two tropical waves. One's more of an interest than the other one, but let's discuss, shall we? So the latest information we got here for you is Tropical Storm Peter is up against some strong wind year, but it will have some minimal impacts towards some of the Caribbean islands, mainly up across the northern section of the Leeward Islands, the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, the island that's shared by Haiti and the Dominican Republic, as well as up towards the eastern side of the Bahamas. Tropical Storm Rose, it's also struggling to get itself organized and together, but it will thankfully stay out to sea with very minimal impact to some of the Cabo Verde Islands, as well as the Azores and the Canary Islands. There is one tropical wave that is up across the northern sections of the Atlantic Ocean that will fade away, or at least not be of much concern to many out there. And then another one that will likely become our next name storm, in which case the next name on the list will be the S name storm. That would be sand that we'd be trussing off right there if it does happen to develop, which right now is looking to be a high chance of development in the next two to five days. But we are definitely going through this list and rather quickly. In fact, we are on pace of the two record breaking seasons, 2005, in which case we went for the first time into the Greek alphabet list. And then last year, 2020, when we went for the second time into the Greek alphabet list, in which case after that, they are no longer being able to use the Greek alphabet list at all. Instead, we get a supplemental alphabetical list right here. You'll see to replace these names if we happen to get past Wanda. And we certainly can do that as we are still going to be going through a pretty active portion of the uh, hurricane frequency portion of the year. Going in throughout October, we can see a little peak right there in terms of tropical activity for both tropical storms and hurricanes. And as you make your way in towards November, both of that activity starts to go on down. The reason why there is that little spike up there in October is that sometimes we get a little bit of some storm activity developing a little closer to home, so to speak, closer towards the United States and Central America, especially when we get one of these strong cold fronts to come on down. They make their way down across the United States, go in towards the Gulf of Mexico, at least the tail end of it, for instance, kick off a little bit of some rotation right there. And you have enough moisture and enough other ingredients to get things going and a little spin in the atmosphere up off can possibly start a tropical wave. And in which case you get a tropical storm to develop and then possibly become a hurricane. But thankfully, all of that becomes not much of an issue at all. Once we make our way in towards December, when a lot of the ingredients are not there for tropical growth and development. So looking across the big picture, shall we? We can go across from the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, in which case both of those portions of the Atlantic Basin are quiet. That's some good news right there. The Atlantic Ocean, however, is a little bit more active. We have Peter right here. It's a tropical storm. So is Rose, tropical storm as well. We have this disturbance, disturbance number two. That was the uh, remnants of Tropical Storm Odette that formed several days ago, and it wasn't lasting long. In fact, it got kind of uh, quickly transitioned towards an extra tropical system, which means it goes from having a warm core to having a cold core as it's losing its tropical characteristics, starts to gain a cold front and a warm front, perhaps. Well, there is indication that it may start to drift on down towards a southeasterly direction, in which case it runs into some slightly more favorable conditions for regrowth and development. That's where you get a 30% chance in two to five days. But either way, it's up in the open waters of the North Atlantic. And if it does get picked up by the jet stream and carried north and east, it may impact uh, eastern portions of Greenland or Iceland, or maybe in towards Scandinavia if it happens to survive that journey through those really cold waters. The other disturbance, that's now Invest 98L. So it's officially being tracked by the National Hurricane Center, which means we have the various computer spaghetti models, as well as some stats. And we'll show you those stats in just a moment on that tropical wave, which is certainly looking like it's going to get its act together in this red highlighted area. That's where we do have that 80% chance of development in two to five days. But for the next two days, next 48 hours, that chance is low around 30% or so. So let's make our way in towards Tropical Storm Peter's point of view, I should say. We have this area just north and east of the Leeward Islands to put your bearings in perspective. And here's Puerto Rico. And as we look at this system right here, we can certainly see that the surface winds are starting to get a little bit more of a closed area of circulation. But what we're also seeing is that as we look at the infrared satellite imagery, where are the cloud tops? Where's the convection? 
pretty much on one side of the system and being carried away from the central area of circulation as we speak. In fact, you can see a little bit of a drift over here and a whole lot more drift over here. So we have two factors right there helping to take away that convection from the center of circulation. That is Peter and trying to carry it away from that point of view. Now, as we look at the upper level winds, that's at 250 millibars, which is pretty much the same altitude a jetliner flies, that commercial jetliner, I should say, and the water vapor imagery loop, which is kind of like an x-ray scan, allowing us to see where the moisture is and where there's dry air. And we can see right there, as we put those two layers together, we have a big swirl in a clockwise direction right here. That's an upper area of high pressure. That's favorable, stable air. Over here, towards the north and west, that's an upper area of low pressure swirling in a counterclockwise direction. Both of these are helping to act like a pulley system and trying to transport that moisture up and away from where we do have Peter to the north. The only problem is Peter wants to hold on to its tropical moisture. It doesn't want its core to be exposed as it's trying to travel towards a west northwesterly direction. But while it's trying to do so, you can see it'll be running up into some upper level winds right here that want to take it towards this vicinity. And in fact, that's where we do eventually see that track for Peter having it go over time. It'll travel towards a northwesterly direction, and it's doing so right now at 15 miles per hour. But as it makes its way eventually over the next several days, it'll start to get more of a northerly than northeasterly turn, weakening as it starts to move on in across these slightly cooler waters of the western portion of the Atlantic Ocean, and then eventually become a tropical depression. But it may start to reform back into a tropical storm as it runs even into some cooler waters as you look at your ocean heat content layer. So let's track Peter, shall we, as we watch it go across its journey. It still has wind sustained at 50 miles per hour, but not for long as it's struggling to keep itself organized and together. It'll likely weaken down to 45 then 40 miles per hour over the next 48 hours or so, and then eventually weaken towards a depression and then possibly re-strengthen to a tropical storm. Bermuda you know, is right in the path potentially of this system. And whether it's a strong tropical depression, a weak tropical storm, either way, it'll bring minimal impacts towards the island nation with some rough wave activity, rough surf, maybe a little bit of a little rise in sea levels as we watch that storm surge, very small storm surge, push over that way, as well as get some rain bands coming on in if we don't see the system completely fall apart before that happens. Now let's head on out towards where Tropical Storm Rose is, which is just coming in off the western portion of the African continent, and those are the Cabo Verde Islands right there. You can see where we do have a couple of names listed for some of those townships over there. So the latest advisory as of 10 a.m. Central Time has winds sustained of 40 miles per hour, so it's a weak tropical storm. It's traveling to the northwest at 16 miles per hour. We though can see it certainly has a little bit more of itself organized right around the center area of circulation and that convection looks to be more cohesive or at least trying to be around that center area of circulation. What we can see though looking right here is looking right here that towards that big ball of convection you can watch those cloud tops which as they get taller taller up in the atmosphere they're going to be showing the signs of being colder as you're getting towards the upper portion of the atmosphere in which case you get those cloud tops to go from red to uh, kind of like a maroon shade of color then to bright purple. We don't see too many of those purple cloud tops, so we don't see any deep convection going on. In fact, we kind of see whatever convection was going on kind of like pitter patter and kind of fade away little by little. So it does look like it's rather healthy, but it's struggling to get itself together and we'll show you why. Because for the time being, there is less upper level wind shear that we have rows running into. It's making its way towards a northwesterly direction. There is some wind shear up ahead of it that will eventually run into coming out of a northwesterly direction. But for the time being, high pressure sitting off the uh, coast of Africa right there is slightly aiding in its drift towards a northwesterly direction. So it doesn't have a lot of wind shear as a, a factor keeping it from strengthening and developing. It's running over very warm sea surface temperatures. So what's stopping the system from growing and developing? Saharan dust. It's a little bit of a kind of a breathing issue right there for ourselves as well as tropical storms alike. If we get dust up in the air and we're trying to breathe, you're going to cough, you're going to wheeze, you're going to maybe get a little teary-eyed. Well, these tropical systems do something similar to that, but at least they do not get the chance for growing and developing. And in fact, we may see their growth and develop completely limited as they struggle to keep themselves together and they may weaken over time. But that's what we have right here for you, the Saharan dust layer as we watch it coming on in off the African continent. And you can see it's certainly making its way over across where Rose is located. In fact, it's going right over Rose. So 
That's why that convection that we showed you earlier on is struggling to get itself going and firing up and eventually trying to get a, a sustaining strong tropical storm, and then in which case after that a hurricane. Instead, we kind of get it kind of like pitter pattering, just slowly making its way across the open waters of the Atlantic while it's trying to get out of this dusty air mass up aloft and trying to move into some slightly uh, more clear skies up ahead. But as we track rows over time, we can see that it'll eventually stay as a tropical storm as it makes its way towards the northwesterly direction, but eventually weaken down towards the depression as we get in towards Wednesday and in towards the end of the work week and into the weekend. We have some cooler sea surface temperatures over around this way. We'll also run into a little more wind shear as we get towards the northern latitudes of the um, northern portion of the Atlantic Ocean. So while it may run away from that dust, it won't be lasting for long in terms of its tropical life cycle, possibly fading away as we make our way in towards the weekend ahead. Now let's make our way into where Tropical Wave Invest 98 is located. And to put into perspective, there's rows we were just talking about just on the corner of the banner right there. So as the latest information from 1 o'clock Central Time from National Hurricane Center, it has winds sustained of 30 miles per hour, and it's moving to the west at a pretty good clip, 18 miles per hour. We can see right there, there is not too much of an organized center yet. So once we get that, then we can possibly see it being labeled as depression or if it's strong enough, a tropical storm. But for the time being, it's very much an open wave, but it will slowly get itself together over the next two to five days. That's what we saw from that outlook from the National Hurricane Center of 80% chance of that happening. Convection though, it was rather robust at first and it's kind of faded away. We do see some pockets of that towards the northern portion of it as well as the western half as well. But we don't have it going completely around the center of circulation indicating a closed tight system. So that's what we do not see a strong tropical depression or tropical storm coming on in. Now, as we track the spaghetti plots, the various computer models, this is where we see if they're all in agreement or if they widely disagree and where we may see this invest go. And for the next several days, they're all in pretty much agreement it's traveling towards a west northwesterly direction. But then over the course of maybe about five to seven days from now, we can see those models all starting to branch out. And there's various discrepancies in terms of where it may go. There is, though, a general consensus right here that it may travel towards a northwesterly direction, but we can't rule out those outliners because all it takes is one of these outliners right here to be verified. And we're like, oh, well, we should go with that one. But for the time being, we go with the consensus and we can see it's going to be heading in towards a northwesterly direction. So we'll take two of those models, the American model in yellow and the European model in red, and we'll track them as they are two of our most trustworthy long range models, especially when we're talking about tropical systems. So there's the location of Invest 98L. And as we move forward in time, we can look for a closed circle indicating a closed wave, in which case that's where the center of circulation is likely to be of the system over time. Heading into Wednesday morning, the European model says we have a closed circulation right there as it's traveling almost due west. The American model says not quite the case. Maybe a broad wave that's trying to close itself together. Either way, it's heading westward. Fast forward, shall we, in towards eventually Friday at noon, lunchtime right there. And the European model has a little bit further westward and a little bit more organized. We see more of these tight concentric circles, those isobars closer together, indicating we have a strengthening system. Meanwhile, the American model in yellow does eventually say the system will get its act together. It's just a little slower in its journey heading towards the west northwesterly direction. Now, as we make our way in towards the weekend and then eventually into Monday of next week, we now have the European model saying, yes, we're going to be having not only uh, an organized system, perhaps a very much strengthening tropical system, possibly looking at a strong tropical storm or a category one hurricane, even category two hurricane, depending upon several other variables. But either way, a lot of the leeward islands right there, the Caribbean islands need to be on a look on alert, I should say, because we have this system potentially going towards the northern portion of the leeward islands. The U.S. British Virgin Islands, for instance, are potentially in that path. Meanwhile, the American model also has it strengthening, developing, becoming more organized, possibly a strong tropical storm or a hurricane. But it's also saying the system will be a little slower in its job. I'd be more looking forward towards seeing where the European model has the system going composed to the American model because if the American model verifies it has the system taking its sweet time across the open waters of the Atlantic Ocean, in which case you don't get any friction from any land masses. You have plenty of sea surface temperatures that are running very much on the warm side for it to feed off of. And for the most part, in this part of the Atlantic Ocean, the wind shear is uh, at a lowered pace, a lowered level. So it has a lot of factors bearing in mind that it can survive that journey that allow it to strengthen, grow, and develop and towards possibly a 
major monster storm. But for the time being, we're keeping our eyes on both of those models as well as the other spaghetti plots to see where this system may go. So here's some final thoughts as we start to wrap up this video. Peter and Rose will both be around for a few more days, but won't impact any land masses directly outside maybe some rough wave activity, especially for the Bahama Islands. Bermuda, you need to keep in mind, we may have Peter swing up towards your vicinity, but maybe just a remnant low at best, or maybe just a weak tropical depression. Invest 98L could become SAM in a few days, and interest in the Caribbean need to keep a close eye from over towards, say, Guadalupe, in towards Puerto Rico, as well as up towards the Bahamas, maybe dealing with the system potentially about a week or 10 days from now. And the Gulf of Mexico is quiet for now. That's very good news for any interest along the Gulf of Mexico coastline, all the way through Mexico, down towards Central America. But the GFS model hints at something forming in early October. And by something, I mean we could get a tropical wave or a depression. It's too far in advance for us to get a really firm lock on what we may potentially be dealing with. But either way, that's why we look at these models every single day, sometimes multiple times a day, to make sure we get the latest information as it continues to evolve and unfold. Have any questions, thoughts, or concerns? Feel free to reach out on social media. I'll be reachable in all these accounts, and I'll be back tomorrow with another weather video.